Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Soul Focus Radio. This is your host, Martin Friedman, and I'm excited to once again be joined by... Rock Giver Madi. Hey, Rock Giver Madi. How are you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great. Awesome. And really can't wait to get this party started, man. I'm so with you, right? I'm also feeling excited, and I'm excited about the reaction to the impact of our podcast the butterfly and the caterpillar. It's been it's been really awesome. I know you've heard a lot of great uh, feedback oh, yes. as well. Yes, yes, yes. Still a lot of response pouring in, a lot of positive response. Excited about that too. Yeah, people have been really, really excited by it. And um, consistently, I've heard one question that people have asked and they have asked, as they've listened to this podcast, they have asked, what is the difference between empowerment and disempowerment? And I, I think that's a wonderful question. So as you listen to the the podcast, as you listen to the podcast, what you are going to hear is that you're going to hear uh, an analogy of empowerment and disempowerment. In the analogy, the butterfly is us in our empowered state. The caterpillar, of course, is us in our disempowered state and how we move from there. You will also hear that we are born butterflies. We are born empowered. In other words, we are born in our natural expression. And we go through a process of programming that takes us out of our natural expression, which disempowers us, causing us to become the caterpillar. And then we then must struggle to get to that point to where we make the decision to accept and to fully express ourselves again naturally, bringing us back into a state of empowerment, which is uh, exampled by the butterfly, the beautiful butterfly. So uh, what I'm hearing you saying, Madi, the difference between empowerment and disempowerment is that we are born empowered. We are externally disempowered. The journey back to empowerment is the journey from the caterpillar to the butterfly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's a beautiful journey. It's like one that, you know, in the movie uh, Wizard of Oz that is brought to a close when you simply click your heels together and you say there's no place like home. In other words, when home becomes everywhere you are, which is signified by you accepting all of yourself, you become the butterfly. And it's just waiting for you to make a decision. So as you listen to this podcast, be encouraged, follow, follow us, you know, support the message and know that we need, we want this message to go out as far as we can into the world. There's someone who needs to hear this. Someone's life is hanging in the balance. That's right. So we want you to get comfortable, take your shoes off, get a nice glass of water. And also at the same time, we want you to hang on for the ride as we take you on the journey to empowerment from disempowerment with this podcast. Yes. Hello and welcome to Soul Focus Radio. I'm your host, Martin Friedman, and I am so excited to be joined by our CEO, Madi. How's it going, Madi? How it's going? Great, man. Wonderful news you just shared with me. I'm I'm excited, (laughs) pumped up about all of this. And in spite of everything you see happening in the world today, it looks so gloomy. There is sunlight bursting through the clouds. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, it's amazing how we are tasked with finding our own energy, finding our own hope in sometimes what seems to be a, a hopeless world. Um, we know that that's so much of what we're here for, right? right? To find that hope and to share that hope with everybody that's listening right now. You, you know what I think? I think that right now we are in a period of ego shedding hmm. where, you know, Everything that's happening in the world is causing us to shed our ego, Mm. uh, to reduce its size so that we can get back to the real within ourselves. Because we've become so distracted by our ego and egos because most of us have more than one ego. Mm. You know, we've been trying to be something for someone else or for other people for so long that it's begun to occur to us as if that's who we really are when it's not. And there's multiple things that we have been being for different people that is just as structural in our personality as uh, the skin on our face to some degree. So I I think 
what's happening with this virus is removing the distractions away so that you can focus on and, and recalibrate with your true and authentic self, what I call the butterfly in the brain. Because mm-hmm. the butterfly in the brain, your natural expression, your creative genius, your authenticity needs to be unleashed. Because if it's not unleashed, we're going to die in a world that we socially constructed uh, and now have forgotten that we were the ones that socially constructed and believe that we can't construct something else. Wow. Yeah, I love that imagery. As soon as you said that, I imagined that idea of a butterfly in our brain and just like, because of all of the thoughts about a butterfly and how it starts out as something that we don't like, right? Like nobody likes caterpillars, you know? Right, right. I know you're from you're from New Orleans originally in the, or, you know, the- Louisiana, Louisiana yeah. Louisiana, right? Got those crazy caterpillars that come out every year and like fall off the trees on your head. And, yeah, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, nobody, everybody hates caterpillars, but everybody loves a butterfly, you know, yes. and butterflies are incredible because I mean, like the monarch butterfly, it, it, it flies thousands of miles, right? you know, it migrates. You know, what's so, you know, what's so, mm-hmm. so magnificent about that whole relationship, caterpillar to butterfly, everywhere you see a caterpillar, you also are looking at a butterfly mm, and you're, right. you're looking at, you know, metaphorically speaking, something a choice that hasn't been made yet. Because when the choice is made or the decision is made, then the caterpillar ascends into the butterfly. But it's in nature. So the caterpillar in real life does not make the choice. The choice is already made by it being what it is. But metaphorically speaking, when we apply that analogy to human beings, there is a decision that has to be made to become the butterfly. Mm. And we make it every day, to be honest with you. Every day we either becoming more of the butterfly or we becoming more of the caterpillar. Mm. And that decision or that choice is every time we choose to be 100% on our own side, every time we practice self-celibacy, which is being true to ourselves, being true to our authentic self, we are choosing the butterfly. Every time we betray ourselves, every time we forsake ourselves, every time we think negatively about ourselves, every time we put ourselves down, every time we knowingly do something to move ourselves away from full health, we are choosing the caterpillar. In other words, we are saying that I need more experience crawling and surviving and just hanging in there before I could really make the decision. You need more decision making time. Some of us have concluded Enough of this, enough of the suffering, enough of the striving, enough of the just making it from one day to another, from one paycheck to another. We want to ascend to our highest height. And we are decided, we have decided that and not going back. Because it's one thing about this. Once the caterpillar becomes the, the butterfly, there is no going back. No wow. going back. Wow. I mean, that imagery is incredible. And I'm also thinking about or the caterpillar has to get in a cocoon, right? Mm. And then just thinking about the analogy for us right now, we've been cocooned, you know, in our quarantine. And I think for many of us, we're actually seeing it as maybe the last opportunity many of us have in this life, Mm. um, you know, to be the butterfly Mm. that we have resisted it. mm, That's powerful, Martin, what you just said. Cause I, I do believe that too, that we are, that certain age groups, we are running out of time to become the butterfly. Some of us are, have, are becoming trapped even as we speak in the caterpillar. Mm. Well, the rest of your days will be spent as a caterpillar because you are not bravely choosing to become the butterfly. See, when we chose to be the butterfly, when we made a decision to, to ascend to being a butterfly, that doesn't mean that we weren't afraid of certain things, that we, we saw some things that didn't scare us. But here is what it means. It means we looked at what scared us and went anyway. Mm. That's what courage is. You see what scares you, but you go anyway and you walk to your fear and you say to fear, you bring courage and you say to fear, give me back my potential. Because fear is what handicaps or kidnaps our potential. And no one could experience their full potential unless you go to fear and you say, give me my potential back. But that doesn't mean you're not afraid. It just means that you have the courage to present yourself before her and she will willingly fear will willingly give you your potential back and you can ascend to the butterfly. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> you just, you're, you're really blowing me away. I'm going to be really honest with you, man. This, this is uh 
This is an incredible analogy. And I think what we have to really be clear about is that it's our choice. Yes. Right? And that we don't feel like it's our choice, but it really is our choice, whether we want to stay a, a caterpillar or become a butterfly. And and flying is is scary if you've never flown before, right? right? Flying inside an airplane the first time you ever fly. And just imagine like what it feels like, you know, to be that caterpillar that's been grounded and, and you mm. know, on a mm. on a tree branch, eating leaves its whole life, and it comes out of this cocoon and it it has to make the decision to fly. Right. I, I could just imagine, right? Imagine imagine the difference that's the real difference other than the body structure. The body structure to me represents a transformation in imagination. Mm. So as the caterpillar, we can only imagine ourselves struggling. We can only imagine ourselves getting just enough to hang in there because the caterpillar's focus is survival. So its brain is focused on survival, whereas the butterfly can imagine something greater. So when you talk about the idea of being happy and fulfilled and healthy, the butterfly can see it in its mind's eye. Whereas the caterpillar cannot, but the caterpillar has hope that it could see it. And, and what it has to do is by blind faith is lean into its desire to want to be free and have the courage enough to face the fear that gives it back the potential that is holding hostage to then submit to the butterfly. Mm -hmm. I believe it's like this, bro, to be honest with you. I believe we, every child is born a butterfly. Mm. And this world has been so cleverly reducing us to caterpillars. Wow. So it's like we, we start off as butterflies, spiritually and metaphorically speaking. We then morph into caterpillars and have to then become butterflies again. And that's, what, that's the opportunity that the universe is saying to us right now. You have the opportunity to become a butterfly again, to look at the face of this world and know that this world is something created by human beings from our own imaginations. And that this world, too, is waiting to bend to the, our will once we are clear about what we want. Mm -hmm. Right now, the world looks exactly like our, what we imagine it to be. And it will never be anything other than what we imagine it to be. But the problem is we are overpopulated with caterpillars mm -hmm. who, have not, who have not decided, who are daring to not decide to become butterflies. And we complain about our caterpillar life. But when it's time to ascend to the butterfly, we hesitate, we want to argue, we get mad because we got to leave the life of the caterpillar behind. Mm. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, what you have me thinking about right now, my D, is also getting out of the cocoon is a fight. Right? Yes. Like, you, you know, it's a struggle. I've been, for some reason, I've been watching a lot of uh, nature shows lately. My wife and I, we've been watching a, lo a lot of nature shows because we don't want to and we we have to watch the ones that like have happy endings too, you know, because there's, there's so much. <laughs> like we can't watch all that, you know. We can't watch all that violent stuff right now, you know. We have to watch uh, all the happy uh, nature shows. We've been watching a lot of like this time lapse, you know, photography stuff, and it shows you really the work that it takes for a caterpillar to get through that cocoon. And I feel like in our social justice movement we never get out of that fighting. Like we, mm. we never get out of that fighting stage mm. of getting out of our cocoon and becoming butterflies, but mm. we become almost addicted to that state and we, we stay stuck in that in-between state. So you, you look at some of the people in our world who are just so brilliant, just, just absolutely brilliant and powerful and have these beautiful spirits and yet are stuck in an angry fighting place, going back to that place over and over and over again. Uh, it's no doubt that we are addicted. And addiction does not necessarily mean that we, you know, like get a high off of it. Mm -hmm. It just means that it is something that we have been repeating over and over again until it occurs in our brain as just the way it is, as normal. Mm -hmm. And then when someone comes to move you or someone introduces you to something else, it strikes fear in you because you are now going to have to go to something you don't, you're not familiar with. And what we've become unfamiliar with is happiness. Health, mm. joy, smiles, love flowing from person to person without, you know, this underlining uh, intention to stab someone in the back or to outdo someone. You know, we, we have to submit ourselves to something greater. You know, I was I was thinking about uh, about all of this because, you know, I think about it a lot. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, looking in nature, I was thinking about the cockroach, right? Mm-hmm. The cockroach is a genius. I mean, a, a straight off genius. And here's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Cockroach is a genius at surviving. A genius. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't, out of all the creatures in the creature world, the cockroach has survived some of the most terrific events in life, right? Mm-hmm. You always see the cockroach, even in places where it looked like there's no sustainable life, the cockroach is surviving. Right. And now here's the thing, the difference between the cockroach and the caterpillar. We have never seen the cockroach become anything other than the cockroach. Mm-hmm. So what that means, that means the cockroach is maximizing its full potential at survival. That's what it was designed to do. Hmm. But the caterpillar has potential. See, that's what makes it so powerful. Wherever there's potential left over, we are obligated by nature to rise to the next level. Hmm. So in human beings, we've seen human beings come from the bottom to the top. We've seen them overcome diseases. We've seen them overcome trauma. We've seen them, you know, take back the best of their life from the most horrible circumstances. We've seen human beings transform into magical creatures. Mm. We see it over and over again. So guess what? That puts a pressure on every human being. Because if you've seen one human being transform into a goddess or a god, if you've seen them transform into that, then we have no excuse. Mm. If you choose to suffer, it is a choice that you are making. Know that it is the choice that you are making. And guess what? We don't have to make the choice with you. Nobody around you has to choose to suffer because you're choosing to suffer. You can come out of trauma because why? Because you are not a cockroach. You are a magical human being with so much power and grace and intelligence and creative genius that you can literally create a world around you that breathes air into you and can be shaped and mold to look like exactly what you want it to be. That's how powerful you are. But you have to accept responsibility for being superwoman or superman because you really are. And the problem is, is that the the cockroach <clears throat> life, the caterpillar life, that's the familiar life to us. The thing about addictions, and this is coming from somebody that's had a a whole bunch of addictions, active addictions and addictions that I'm in recovery from, you know, the part of the thing with addictions is the familiarity of them. You know, it feels like home. Mm. It feels like this is how I'm supposed to be. So you're right. It's not an addiction in the sense of like euphoria, but it's, it's an addiction in the sense of familiarity. And there's so much fear about facing really exactly who we are Mm. and stepping into our non cockroach, non caterpillar brilliance of being that butterfly. Like there, and I can just speak for myself, also somebody that's fought depression in my life too. You know, people like there's something so comforting about depression because you feel like you can't go any lower. Right. And you know, we're scared of flying because when you're up there flying, you know, bad shit could happen to you. That's that's how we're programmed, right? So we're so much more comfortable on the ground and so much more comfortable in familiarity, even if it's depression, even if it's addiction, even if it sucks, we're just, we're, we get so comfortable being there. I'm going to give you an example of myself, right? Because mm-hmm. who am I? It's not what am I, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a difference between who we are and what we are. Right. So a part of my what is being my D. That's a what I am. Right. One who's rightly guided. My mind has been calibrated to help give people guidance and leadership. But who I am is Rock Giver. Now, Rock Giver is a spiritual, that's the real title of my being. That's what my being really is. And, and it's about giving sunlight. It's about providing sunlight and nourishment to the soul of people so they can grow. So think about it this way. So for years, I've been my D. Mm-hmm. People know me as my D. But to ascend into the butterfly, I have to embrace where I give it. I have to embrace my total being in in order to live while I'm alive. Because see, what we are what we are not doing is that we are not living fully while we're alive. Mm. We are we look at what we want and then we tell ourselves we can't have it. And so when people ask you, do you want that or do you care about that? You I don't really care, it don't matter to me. And you're lying. So living while living is like you fully embracing. Yes, I want it. And I'm going to give 100% to get it. 
I don't care what the consequences are. I'm going to give all of myself to it. Why? Because nature itself requires me for for me to grow into my full self. I got to give all of myself to everything that I desire in this life. Our life would look totally different if we went full speed. What we've been doing is half-assing it. Our lives looks like half-ass looks. As you say that, I'm feeling something. I want to I want to talk to you about this like in the moment. Even as you say that, as you talk about who you are and you know the transformation and the different people that you are and what you're here to do, it feels like to me that a lot of people could hear that and feel that it's pretentious. And that word pretentious came into my mind, right? And then mm-hmm. so so what's the root of the word pretentious? It's pretend, right? right? It's like you're pretending to be great. It's like you're pretending to be able to lead people somewhere and You know, that was, I'm being honest that I I felt that I'm like, you know, this feels like it could be, I'm not saying I felt it for me necessarily, because I know you and I know the impact you've had on my life and so many other people's lives. But I'm just thinking about somebody listening to this. And I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, that dude's pretentious. You know, he's naming himself and he's transitioning from this name to that name. And, you know, the root of pretentious is pretend. Right. And I think that, you know, that that's what the butterfly or that's what the caterpillar and the cockroach yeah. is saying about the butterfly. Look at that pretentious motherfucker exactly. flying around up here, <laughs> laughing his fancy ass wings. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, Martin. That is absolutely because that's exactly what the cockroach and the caterpillar would be saying about the butterfly. Look at him. Hmm. Who in the fuck does he think he is? How dare he reach for the sunlight? How dare he spread his wings with all those beautiful colors? Look at him. Who you? Keep suffering. You're making a choice. That's right. And no matter how negatively you describe the butterfly, the butterfly is not going to stop flying. Because mm. it's one thing about the butterfly. The butterfly is fully aware of the fact that knowing that he doesn't have a lot of time to live. Mm. Butterflies mm. don't live that long. In the, in the scope of life itself, life is short anyway, because the thing is, none of us know how much time we have anyway. So I think it's, you know, it, it's so amazing how those two things link. The butterfly's lifespan is so short, but the reality is the lifespan of a human being is short because none of us know how much time we have. Mm. So keep writing and reporting on, commentating on the butterfly. While the butterfly enjoys its life, you are choosing to suffer. And the reality is you are not facing your fear. No one chooses their lesser self over their greater self other than for the fact that they are free. And we all have to face our fear. As John Gotti once said, yes, I'm quoting John Gotti. (laughs) John Gotti said, it's all right. (laughs) He said, I don't lie to nobody. Because I'm not afraid of nobody. Mm. The only reason why people lie is because they are afraid. John right. Gotti was preaching, right? And right. we got to be honest with ourselves about that because we will lie. We will lie on our fears and fears say, you keep lying on me. But guess what? The potential I'm holding hostage for you, you're not going to get it back until you come show yourself with the courage to say, yes, I was afraid of that, but I'm not afraid anymore. I'm not afraid to be happy anymore. I'm not afraid to be in love anymore. I'm not afraid to be, to have everything I desire. I'm not afraid to drive the best, to eat the best. I'm not afraid of, you know, just having my children be happy and healthy. And I'm not afraid of any of this. I want the sunshiny world that was promised to me the minute I was born. And guess who promised it to me? I did. Mm. And I owe it to myself to give it to myself, just like you do. You owe it to yourself to give it to yourself. We're not marching. All this social justice work that we've been doing, what is it for if it's not for us to be able to experience the joy and the happiness that comes with life? That's right. Ooh, man. <laughs> this is amazing. I, you know, so as you're talking, I'm thinking about ego, right? Like, again, I'm thinking about the cockroach and the caterpillar looking up at the butterfly and saying oh my god look at the ego on that dude right <laughs> ego, so, so so egoic you know such a a swelled head thinks better than the rest of us right because he's mm-hmm. flying around up there and you know going thousands of miles and doing his job of, of taking the you know the pollen from one place to another and 
and all of this stuff, you know, but look at him up there thinking he's all that, you know, big, big head, arrogant. And then I'm, I'm reminded that one of the most powerful parts of my transition and working with you as a life coach was also understanding that ego is just as much making us small. Yes. And so really the butterflies up there looking down at the caterpillar and the, and the cockroach saying, man, look at the egos on those, on those guys down there. <laughs> so they just stay stuck. They have the opportunity to be up here with me and they stay stuck. Right. Yes. I want to just say, you know, put myself in this too, because I know a huge piece of my life has been making myself small. The ego, the way ego has played out for me is making myself small. And, you know, I was thinking about names as you were talking and, you know, so I was named, I was given the name Martin, right? Right. Martin, uh, M-A-R, the root of M-A-R is is war. And I've been a, a, in conflict and fighting most of my life, living up to that part of the name, right? And, you know, it, fighting for social justice, fighting, you know, family shit, whatever, fighting, fighting, fighting my whole life. And about five years ago, I'd say four or five years ago, a, a close friend named me, renamed me and said, you know, you know what you are? She said, you're a teddy bear Moses. <laughs> she, said, she said, you're soft and cuddly, but you fight tirelessly for liberation. Mm. And it was just clicked in the moment, right? right? And so from that point forward, I have been working to live up to that name, right? Because my parents actually named me in Hebrew. Um, they named me Moses in Hebrew. Mm. And this is, this is like powerful, my D, because what I'm thinking about right now is they said, well, this was 1963. And you can't name your son Moses, right? Mm. So they named me Moshe in Hebrew, which is Moses, but but they gave me the English name Martin. Wow. You know, the the, the American, wow. the white name Martin, right? Wow. So when we talk about like what whiteness does to us and how, you know, mm. our ethnicity and our true self. So they separated me from my true self, which is Moses, wow. which is actually being brought here to, to help liberate people, wow. right? To help liberate us from the tyranny of whiteness. You know, us meaning white people too, right? Right. And but I was separated from that by the way I was named. And when I was renamed Teddy Bear Moses, which doesn't sound nearly as regal as your rename <laughs> the name that, you, that you're living <laughs> into, but I'm comfortable with that. <laughs> but you know, when I tell people that, they're like, exactly, like fucking exactly. That's exactly who you are, because I'm a loving, caring, gentle, kind person who will act tirelessly. I want to get away from the fighting tirelessly, but who will act tirelessly, who will go through trials and tribulations, who will do everything I can to liberate other people out of negative situations. And now what it, the transition for me has to under, is to then to understand that I have to become my own butterfly. I have to yes. liberate myself yes. from my caterpillar-ness wow. in order to transcend into my butterfly-ness wow. to really step into my Moses-ness, my liberation-ness. Wow. That's exactly you know? what it is. That's the coming out. You know, like in a LGBTQ plus community, they talk about coming out of the closet, right? I think we yes. all are coming out of the closet. Yes. For me, you know, introducing to people, Ragiva is coming out of the closet. Why? Because I know there's more to me than this. Right. There's more to me than my D. There's more to me than Berwick. There's more to me mm -hmm. than I started off with. I am constantly growing. And one day while sitting down working on, I think it was my second book, uh, I had this vision, this awakening vision where Ragiva came from out of a tree, walked out of a tree in spirit form, walked up to me and says, let me introduce myself to you. I am you in the future. Mm. And that was mind blowing to me. He says, this is who you are, rock giver, who you are, the vibration, the highest vibration of your being and why you have presented yourself on this planet. Right. Mm -hmm. And for years, I hid that. For years, I remained in the closet about being rock giver. The vibration of rock giver is completely different from the vibration of my day. My day is a mild mannered guy. Mm -hmm. Rock giver is not. Mm -hmm. Rock giver is fully aware that guess what? Time is of the essence. We got to make sure that we grab a hold to it full with both hands and live it like a like a surfer who's surfing on one of the highest waves they ever seen before. They got to take it on fully. And but guess what? As he's surfing, he's enjoying himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's really in heaven on that wave. We look at that wave. You know, those of us who are afraid of water don't surf it like us terrifying. But that's a butterfly at the top of that wave. He's a butterfly. And he's like, oh, look at this. Boy, I waited for this wave for a while now. He could drown, but it's not a thought at all on his mind. Why? Because right. he's focused on 
the potential in himself, and he knows he has the potential to ride that wave. We are unhappy, frustrated, disappointed, not because there's no bigger thing waiting for us. It's because there's something bigger waiting for us. You would not experience frustration, disappointment, and sadness if there wasn't something greater waiting for you. You'd be happy with disappointment if there was nothing else you could achieve. The cockroach is happy being the cockroach because it's living its full potential life. But the caterpillar cannot be happy fully because the caterpillar knows there's still a butterfly. There's more to me than this. Mm. Wow. There's more to you than this. Stop, stop settling for being small, for playing it small, for living small, and then teaching your children to live it small. We could take over this thing by just opening the door to our potential and say, come in. I'm ready to sleep with you. I'm ready to make love with you. I'm ready to allow you to take me in and fill me up with inspiration. That's what we need right now. Because right now we've been going in circles with the same bullshit and it is not opening the door to a new reality. We got to bust from out of our cocoons and welcome our butterfly, whatever that butterfly is. Wow. Such a great metaphor for our social justice movement right now, because oh, instead wow. of instead of becoming butterflies, what we do is we caterpillars climb up on each other to get high enough to pull the butterfly back down. Mm. Right. Mm. That's what we do. The caterpillars are jealous. They're angry and they don't want to see anybody. If they're not ready to step into their butterflyness, they don't want anybody to. Mm. And it's it's painful. It's painful because nobody else has to stop us externally. We're stopping ourselves. And that's been the case for a really long time. That's what the world figured out. Figured out shit. Yeah. The best person to get to stop us is us. Shit, yeah. The world ain't got to do shit. The powers that be in this world don't have to do nothing. Just let us do it. Because why? Because every creature in life that has more potential in itself and is not reaching for that potential will begin to sabotage its own existence. And guess what? The only really creature or being in this life that has the, the choice to not surrender to its full potential is human being, which gives you just some indication of how powerful you are. You are the only one that can say to life, no, I am not going to surrender to becoming bigger. I am going to choose to be small. That's what you've been doing. You've been using your power to stay small. Wow. And that sounds like a sin. <laughs> that, that is, that, that is, literally that is, that is the only sin. Choosing to stay small when you know there's something bigger in you calling. That's why you're so uncomfortable. That's why you're so unhappy. That's why you're so mad. That's why you can't sleep at night. Your mind is racing around the clock. That's why you talk about people like a dog. That's why you can't get along with folks. It's because you're saying no to God in yourself. Mm. And God is knocking on the door saying, let me out. I want to come back to the earth, but I have to come back through you. And if you want to accept the butterfly in me, then I can't come back. You locking God out. Mm. So we're coming to the end of our time. I want to go back to another visualization that you, you gave us at the beginning. You talked about that where we are in this world right now is we are shedding our ego and I love the the butterfly, the caterpillar butterfly analogy. And then another one that came to my mind, and I really want you to talk about this too. When a, sh a snake sheds its skin, mm. something I learned recently, it's a very painful process, yes. right? So like you're walking out in the woods and you come across, you know, the old skin of a, of a snake. I don't know if you've ever seen it or not. I've yeah, seen I it have. a couple of times, I right? Have. Yeah. And you know, so all you see is the old self, right? And then you might see the, the snake or you might not. But if you did see the snake, you just see the snake just, you know, going around being a snake, you know, squirming around on the ground and doing its thing. But what we don't know is how incredibly painful of a process it was for uh, the snake to shed that skin. And our shedding of a collective ego right now is an incredibly painful process. It's not easy. And most of us retreat from that pain. I just, I want to know if you could just build on that, that, that analogy a little bit as we close out on this, this podcast. Here's, here's what I like to hold as true. Uh, you know, because there's like two things could be true. Two or three things could be four or five things could be true at the same time. Hmm. We live in a, a complex universe that we have tried to oversimplify in some cases. 
but just know that there are different things can be true. Who's to say it's painful to the snake? Mm. Because the reality is it's someone looking at the snake and it occurs to them. It looks like to them it is painful. Mm. But what if the snake has been calibrated in his thinking to embrace the skin shedding because it's mm. growing it's growing and experiencing something more of itself. What even if the caterpillar is really not in pain and you don't discover that the caterpillar is really not in pain in the breaking out of the cocoon, it's just, it, it appears to us to be painful. What if the caterpillar is like rejoicing, gleefully and glad, oh Lord, finally, finally, I'm going to be able to experience all of myself. I'm going to fly and is looking forward to it. What if that is really the mindset? What if we have been programmed to believe that it's painful and it's hard and it's difficult? That's what we make it to be when we can create it to be something else. What if pain, correctly understood, is not really pain? What if it's growth? What if it's growth? And we've been saying no to growth. Amen and hallelujah. I've been, I've been, I've been wanting to say that this whole podcast. I mean, this, uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you preached, you preached a sermon and a half today, man. That was yeah, Ragiba. Uh, Ragiba is on uh, it today. Ragiba is on, on it today. today. Yeah, Ragiba with a little, a little assist from Teddy Bear Moses. Definitely Moses <laughs> and Ragiba. <laughs> Who would ever thought it, right? <laughs> Who would have ever thought? Nobody would have ever thought. Nobody would have ever thought. Oh my gosh. Well, this is, um, man, this has been inspirational for me, and I can't wait Likewise. for us to get this out to the world because it's inspirational. I mean, we we have a choice. Every one of us has a choice. Will we remain a caterpillar you know, for the rest of our time on earth, or will we experience what it feels like to be a butterfly? That's our choice. That's the question. You know, you know what, Martin? I'll say this before yes, we close. Yes, sir. Growth is like so essential. Mm. And- to deny growth, because here's the thing, you, you grow or you don't. And the opposite of growth is dying. Hmm. The way life is designed, we have to move toward growth or we move toward dying. Hmm. So imagine you are choosing to die. And on that day when it's time for you to die, you're not going to want to die. I've been there. I've had one of those out of body experiences because I wanted for a long time, wanted to die. And I didn't know what I was asking for until death came to me. And when death came to me and showed me how permanent it was, I realized I wanted to live and I begged for my life. Thank God life came back into my body. But the reality is what I discovered is that you either grow or you die. Some of you are choosing to die. And it's a sad thing to watch, to be connected to you and watch you choose to die. On that note, I thank you. Um, I thank everybody for listening. Um, we want you to know that that we love you and yes. that we offer all of this. All of this we offer because of how much we love you. Yes. Every single one of you. And we we are we desperately desperately want to see people choose life and, yes. and, and choose the butterfly. And uh, we invite you to learn more about what we do at soulfocusedgroup.com. Uh, we invite you to listen to the whole series of podcasts that we have. Look for more things coming from us. Um, you can look on Spotify and iTunes and, and all of those places. You know, we just, again, we thank you and we ask, we ask that, that today Today, with everything else that you have to do, we ask that you do one other thing for us, and that's that you stay soul-focused. Please stay soul-focused.